I've always wondered what the story was behind this memorial to RAF Flight Lieutenant Richard Hillary. It's signposted off the main road between Greenlaw and Coldstream. But it's also a memorial to the many other officers and airmen who lost their lives while serving at RAF Charter Hall. Where was Charter Hall? Does anything survive of Charter Hall? And what was going on there? So many men lost their lives. So I'm down here today near Greenlaw, looking to see if any remains of Charter Hall airfield actually do survive. And already I'm starting to see these outbuildings quite near to the site. I'm just going to take a closer look at this one. completely derelict now but you can see it's been quite a significant complex here I don't know exactly what this part of it was these outbuildings are everywhere around the whole Charter Hall site Let's go and see how much of the actual airstrip survives. And here we go. You can begin to see the old tarmac of these taxiways. Where's, let's see if we can see the main, the main runway. And here it is. The main runway at Charter Hall. It's absolutely vast, you can hardly see the end of it. I don't know what I was expecting, I was expecting something a bit more smaller. Wow! Because you see, during the war, Charter Hall here was an extremely important base for the RAF because it was here that the bomber pilots were trained. Thousands of young men brought to Charter Hall to be trained up as bomber pilots. In the woods just off the side of the, the main runway there, there are still loads of old old buildings. I don't know what they all were. A lot of them are blast shelters, I think. Yeah, this one here definitely looks like some sort of bomb shelter. Let's see if I try can I get in. Some sort of bombshell. There's probably loads of these on this side. 
one time. Charter Hall was one of the most widely dispersed airfields in Britain. Literally miles between different areas. Some of the old hangar buildings and utility sheds or whatever they were are now being used for agriculture or industry all around the site. So there you go, we've established that Charter Hall was a World War II airfield training bomber pilots. And it still exists, it's still a fantastic site to this day. But I'm afraid there's a lot more to Charter Hall's history than that. You see, Charter Hall became infamous or famous for all the wrong reasons because it was nicknamed Slaughter Hall. And that was down to the number of young men that were killed here during the war. But you see, young men were being brought in here from all over the UK and the British Commonwealth. The planes they were flying, the training planes, the training aircraft, were of a poor quality and they were flying at night. So accidents began to happen very quickly. I bought this book by J.B. Thompson, the Charter Hall story, expecting it to be a kind of light-hearted, nostalgic look back at Charter Hall and what all happened there. What I got is a brutal blow-by-blow -blow account of every single fatality that happened at Charter Hall. A shockingly, shockingly interesting read. The demise of Richard Hillary was only one of 200 fatalities here. 200! It's really not difficult to imagine this place during the war. Thousands of guys, hundreds of aircraft coming in and out all day long. But hundreds of those aircraft crashing over the years. And Charter Hall here was not the only airfield in this area. There was a satellite airfield just a few miles down the road called Winfield. Winfield airfield here, just a few miles down the road from Charter to Hall towards the sea. This was almost like the finishing school. Once pilots had done their initial training at Charter Hall, they came down here to do almost live flying. And this also was a hotbed of accidents and death. But there's one thing that makes Winfield stand out as an airfield even more prominently probably than Charter Hall and that's the control tower
So Winfield and Charter Hall, both largely forgotten these days. And the hundreds, literally hundreds of young men that died here during the war. Apart from the memorial to Sir Richard Hillary. But is there, is there any remembrance of the other guys that died here? Sadly, for a lot of young men who came to Charter Hall, this Fogo Cemetery, just a couple of miles along the road from Charter Hall, became their eternal resting place as they were buried here. Can't find a single grave of anybody over 30 years old. All young men, a lot of them from the other side of the world, Australia, Canada, New Zealand. The remains never made it home to their mothers and fathers, brothers and sisters. But at least they get a dignified respected and remembered grave here. What I always find interesting these days is the way that World War II history is changing. You see, when I was a, a boy, World War II history was first hand from my grannies and old neighbours, people who had witnessed stuff, people who were there, seen it with their own eyes. But now, there's not many people left that have, that have got that experience and World War II history is becoming more and more ancient. So I think that's why we need to to remember it even more. Things like Charter Hall, you know, the airfield's just slipping into a state of decay and disrepair. Hopefully, these graves will be remembered a bit longer. <laughs>